down to the cotangent curve. Now, cotangent is just the reciprocal function. So let's talk about your asymptotes, which were created by 1 over 0 or negative 1 over 0. What happens when you reciprocate an undefined? It becomes zero. So where our asymptotes were, we now have zeros at our odd pi's over two. And where our zeros used to be at the full pi values, what happens when you reciprocate zero? Becomes undefined. So we have asymptotes now at the full pi values. Good? Any questions on that part? Okay, and then what happens in between? So let's go back to our tangent graph. And just after zero, we have a teeny tiny number. Let's pretend it's like one one hundredth is our output. What's the reciprocal of a teeny tiny number? A huge number, right? The reciprocal of one one hundredth is a hundred. The reciprocal, if we get even smaller, of one one million is a million. So just after zero, on the, where we, in a tangent graph, we had a teeny tiny number, positive, but teeny tiny. Just after zero here, we're going to have a positive, but it's not going to be teeny tiny. It's going to be humongous, a.k.a. it's going towards positive infinity. Let's look on the tangent graph just before pi. It's a teeny tiny negative number. So the reciprocal of a teeny tiny negative number is a humongous negative number. And we get this going towards negative infinity just prior to pi. And so we have a similar looking graph as the tangent, but it's always decreasing as opposed to always increasing. Do you see that? And you're going to have that behavior just repeat over and over again like the tangent did. It's just cotangent is always decreasing as you go around the unit circle because rather than opposite over adjacent, it's adjacent over opposite. And there's your parent graph for cotangent. So take note of the fact that your asymptotes and zeros switch spots from where they were in the tangent graph. Does that make sense? Any questions on that? What's on the back? Excellent. Okay. So we have a function with some transformations y equals 2 times the tangent of, this is technically 1 half x. I know for some people it's easier to see that. So the way I like to do tangents is focusing on the location of your asymptotes first. So for the tangent paragraph, it's at the odd pi's over 2. What does this do as far as horizontal stretching and compressing? It stretches it by a factor of 2. So if your original asymptotes are at pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, etc., then your new asymptotes are where? If you're stretching by a factor of two. Pi. Six. 
6 pi over 2, which would be 3 pi, good. 10 pi over 2, which would be 5 pi. And do you see, you obviously see the pattern? Every other pi. So this particular instruction is for us to graph this from negative pi to 3 pi. So I'm going to maybe put my y-axis here. And my x-axis can go right down the middle. And I'll call this negative pi, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi. And my asymptotes are at 3 pi, pi. How about over here, once we, do we have any more asymptotes in that window from negative pi to 3 pi? Negative pi is also an asymptote, good. And your zeros for the tangent graph are always halfway between your asymptotes, so that's not going to change. So we have a zero here, a zero here. A tangent graph is always going to be increasing unless you reflect it. This one does not have a reflection, right? And there is an amplitude of 2 here, but that really doesn't do much other than, I guess if your parent graph does that, maybe it's going to stretch it out a little bit. I'm not going to get very much into the details about stretching and compressing a tangent graph because like the woman said in the video, we don't have an amplitude to worry about. We don't have a maximum or minimum to worry about. If we did, that would affect it. And there's our graph from negative pi to 3 pi. Your period for tangent, because it's for the for the parent graph to come up with your new period it's no longer 2 pi over b it's just pi over b yes the new period when you're dealing with tangent is just pi over b and so in this particular case that's pi over what's our b value 1 half isn't our b value 1 half pi over a half is 2 pi. So our period should be 2 pi. Is that the length of time it takes for this cycle to repeat from pi to 3 pi? Yes, that's a distance of 2 pi. So that all works out well. Totally different period formula for tangent graphs. Not 2 pi over b, just pi over b. And that's because the period is not, the original period is no longer 2 pi, it's just pi. Good, any questions there? Okay, for our cotangent graph, I'll start the same way. Our old asymptotes were where? 0, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, etc. Right? Our new asymptotes are where? What is the horizontal stretch or compression that's going to affect our asymptotes? Compression by a half. So we're going to take half of all of these. So 0 is still 0. Pi becomes pi over 2. 2 pi cut in half becomes pi. 3 pi over 2, etc. Now this doesn't give us a window that we have to stay within. It just says two full periods. So I'm going to put my y-axis all the way to the left, which also coincidentally is going to be an asymptote. And then I'm going to go here and put pi over 2, here and put pi. And that's really as far as I'm going to have to go because both of those are asymptotes and it wants two full periods. Two full periods for a tangent or cotangent 
Curve just means two little inter two intervals between asymptotes. So our zeros again are always halfway in between. It's a vertical stretch by three, but again, that does not really do much for us, but makes it get maybe steeper faster. And cotangent curves, unless they're unless they're reflected, are always going to decrease. Steven? Phase shifts will, will shift your asymptotes over to the left or over to the right from those original locations, correct? Absolutely, I always would start with my asymptotes. Because then it gives you the window, you just go halfway in between for your zeros and so on. Even if we had a, a vertical shift, now you, your zeros are just now on your new horizontal midline, so to speak, although there's no such thing as really a middle. Good. So this is going to be a little bit more new to you than sine and cosine because you probably, well, you did this maybe last year, but not, right, not as in depth, right, because in algebra 2, tangent is not, Ramana, I don't even teach it in my algebra 2 classes. So the fact that you've done it at all is a little bit of a head start, but I'm pretty much considering this as being brand new to you.